Today, Bitcoin and Ether start November in the green. A new poll finds more than half of Americans think crypto is the future of finance. And Steve McClurg of Valkyrie explains how crypto investors are prepping for yet another rise in interest rates. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Digital currencies swinging higher after starting the morning in the red. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin was still worth $20,000 and Ether was worth a little less than $1,600. Also, Dogecoin continues to be one of the best performers in the market. It's up 17% so far today. That's thanks again to Elon Musk and hopes that his new ownership of Twitter will make the social media site Doge friendly. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First, a new poll finds that more than half of Americans think cryptocurrencies are, quote, the future of finance. The nationwide survey conducted by Grayscale and the Harris Poll found that Democrats are more likely to agree with that statement than Republicans at 59% to 52%. The survey also found that economic concerns may be driving investors to look for new investment strategies like crypto. 25% of Americans said inflation and the current economic climate have made them interested in crypto. This poll follows a few other studies in recent weeks, which has shown a growing number of voters in battleground states have invested in crypto. And on the topic of investor sentiment and crypto, another new survey shows a rising number of young investors want digital currencies in their 401ks. Charles Schwab surveyed 1,000 401k participants and found that nearly half of millennial and Gen Z employees wished they could put some of their investments in crypto. Now, some 401k providers are getting into the crypto space. Fidelity Investments, which handles retirement plans for nearly 23,000 businesses, now lets employers provide Bitcoin investing for employees. But on the other hand, the U.S. Labor Department told 401k providers to exercise extreme care when offering crypto services. Last up, Coinbase is stepping into the lawsuit between the SEC and Ripple. The crypto exchange filed a petition with the federal court to stand behind Ripple and two of its executives as it defends claims that it offered an unregistered security with the XRP token. In the filing, Coinbase said the SEC's lack of regulatory guidance means it didn't give fair notice to Ripple ahead of the lawsuit. This lawsuit between the SEC and Ripple is pretty high stakes as it could determine just how much power the agency has to regulate the crypto industry without new legislation. All right, let's talk about our main story. Ahead of the Fed meeting this week, I spoke with Steve McClurg, Chief Investment Officer at Valkyrie, about how investors are planning for yet another potential rate hike. November 1st, we just finished what ended up being a strong month. I think a lot of people were anticipating that just based on history, but it, it was kind of a close one there for a lot of October. Uh, but looking back on the month, what do you make of Bitcoin and Ether and crypto in general's performance over October? Well, what I think is starting to happen is, you know, crypto really dropped back in the spring when it delivered. And the rest of the market had to catch up, so that's why we saw a little bit of decoupling uh, over the you know early fall, late spring, uh, sorry, uh, late summer, uh, with uh, with with Bitcoin and, and ETH starting to rise along with some other uh, cryptocurrencies. And I actually believe that we're really close to a bottom right here. Um, it is possible that we test the lows of this year one more time, uh, but uh, for the most part, we're we're close to a bottom. And um, I think a lot of more, a lot more bad news is actually good news for crypto. Why are we close to a bottom? You know, there's the old adage, don't fight the Fed. And uh, the Fed is still progressing towards a uh, really uh, a tight monetary policy. But they're getting close to the end of the tightening cycle. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're pivoting and going the other way yet. But we're starting to see some cracks in the economy that will likely cause them to pivot sometime probably in the near future. But given that that we already experienced uh, the uh, the volatile months of crypto back last spring when everything delevered and Celsius and Voyager and everything else crashed and people have delevered their portfolios, now people are starting to rebuild again. And one of the biggest indications that we're seeing at the moment is um, the amount of Bitcoin that is moving off of exchanges and into cold storage. Uh, so, so far, we've had nearly a billion in Bitcoin just recently moved to cold storage. And this is usually a really bullish sign. It means people are hoarding their Bitcoin and they're saving it. 
And if anything, they're only going to be buying more with uh, the stable coins uh, that they're sitting in uh, largely unused. So we're starting to see that, that, that market move while equities are still catching up and still suffering. Do you think that the crypto market is getting a little bit too optimistic about the Fed? And, you know, we're talking about looking beyond the upcoming rate hike, but, um, you know, GDP rising again, you know, all signs point to costs still rising, even if they're wavering slightly. The Fed, you know, could still be in course for four to five percent terminal rate, even if it uses smaller rate hikes to get there. Uh, Your take on the optimism? Yeah, I think we might be slightly too optimistic in the markets right now. Um, so, you know, this is a, a bit of a rally that I think we'll see a, a small pullback anyway. Um, but I think traders are just impatient and getting ahead of themselves. You know, we you're, you're right. We do see uh, the Fed this week uh, raising rates another 75 basis points. And I do expect to see a total of 5% uh, of, at the Fed funds rate by probably by March. So, um, so we will get to a higher rate. Uh, we are going to get to a higher terminal rate, which takes liquidity out of the markets. But here's the other interesting side of that is given that rates are higher, the Treasury, U.S. Treasury Department is, is having to print more bonds. They're having to uh, print more treasuries because not only do they have to cover all the government spending, uh, that's occurring, but they also have to cover the increased cost in paying debt service. So that increase in uh, in treasuries that are coming onto the market, increased supply, there's also less demand because at the same time, the Fed is rolling treasuries off of their balance sheet and uh, other countries are also slowing down their purchase of treasuries as are bond managers. You know, uh, why would you buy long-term treasuries if rates are only going to go up, you're going to suffer in price. Uh, so we're already seeing a disconnect in the bond market where much wider bid ask spreads are present and a um, lot less demand. And, and there could be a failed treasury auction soon. And that's, I think, what people are anticipating at this time. You know, we're all watching that news. Uh, Argo failing to raise $27 million in a strategic round. What do you make of the mining space right now? Because the Argo news follows... You know, some warnings that, of course, scientific, you know, being on the verge of bankruptcy. At the same time, you look at the network metrics and the Bitcoin hash rate, you know, has remained strong, keeps hitting all time highs. What should investors make of that? Uh, this market right now reminds me of 2014 and 2015 all over again. Um, there was a lot of excitement of good business people getting into mining, but there's a lot to learn about the mining space. And uh, timing is essential when it comes to Bitcoin mining. Uh, so um, uh, there was a lot of excitement this time around as well. Uh, there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of leverage that was taken on to buy mining equipment by you know some firms that are new, some firms that were old but had a change of management. And uh, so really, what we're seeing is um, you know it's the wheat in the shaft right now, right? And um, so a lot of the older miners, uh, the, the folks that have been around for a while, are in a very strong position. So what we think is going to happen is some of the stronger firms will, will, will probably bolster their position. Uh, there's probably going to be some M&A, uh, and, and that will reduce redundancy and cost. Uh, but, uh, but at the end of the day, mining is really about three things, uh, in, in addition to timing and knowing commodities. Uh, it's really about understanding the energy market, which is essentially commodity business. Bitcoin is a commodity business, but it's also understanding the software piece and the hardware piece and understanding market cycles. And the ones that have, have that have been around since two, 2010, 2012 uh, are really the, uh, you know, the, the strong positions right now. And uh, despite all that, you know, we do think that we're at the bottom uh, right now in mining and we probably expect to see a lot of this activity pick up. Uh, towards the end of the year and into Q1. Uh, we, we think it's a great time to, uh, to own miners. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow, so we'll see you then.